Chris Grutzmacher taking on Alexander the Great Hernandez is our next fight here. We've got a lightweight fight that I'm very, very excited about. A lot of you know me. I've been on the Alexander Hernandez train for a very long time. I like this kid. Even though he's had a couple of bumps, a couple of setbacks in the road, I still believe in him. I think he's got all the tools and all the raw talent that he's going to need to be able to be something in this division in the future. Chris Grutzmacher, 14-3 and three coming in here. This is a guy who is willing to eat shots and return fire and just hit you harder than you can hit him. He's got a heavy top game, decent wrestling, but he's incredibly stiff in the stand-up area, and he's very, very hittable which against the guy who's going to have a speed advantage in Alexander Hernandez, that is not a recipe for success in my opinion. Hernandez has got a black belt now. He's strong. He's explosive. He's going to be the bigger guy here. And he took a little bit of a layoff himself. We talked about, you know, younger fighters making those jumps up. And I think Alexander Hernandez has had a change of mentality. And that's a big, big deal to me here because he started to believe his own hype. He started to think that his crap didn't stink. And because of that, he made some bad moves. He didn't change some things around. He was the big dog on campus, and he liked that. Now he's changed gyms, and he's finally getting to where he's got some world-class training partners, world-class talent. He's not the best guy in the gym, and I think that's going to do leaps and bounds for him. It's going to force him to grow. So I think we're going to see a new version of Alex Hernandez, and rightfully so. He's a huge favorite here. I've got him parlayed with Adrian Yanez. That comes to about minus 139, and I don't mind laying the chalk about minus 140 to win a unit there. What do you think? I'm totally with you here. Talk to, I've talked about this a lot tonight about fights that are kind of set up here. This is one that's set up for Hernandez. You said that you know a lot of people like Hernandez, yourself included. I think the UFC likes Hernandez. They like the fact he yeah. pops off a little bit. They like the fact that he can you know go out there and knock out a Benil Dariush and be somewhat entertaining. He's had some bad fights too, but I think in general, you sort of know what's there with Alex Hernandez and how the mighty have fallen. I remember when he fought Drew Dober earlier this year. Didn't look so good. He looked totally out of his element in that fight. And Drew made him look like an amateur in that one. And that forced him to go over to Factory X. So a number of things. I didn't have a chance to interview Hernandez. He actually had to reschedule with me. And we didn't end up uh, getting to do it. But I did catch his interview with Mike Heck over at MMA Fighting. Shout out to Mike, one of my favorite guys in the industry. Um, Hernandez, uh, you know, talked about how just back home, there was not a lot of structure. Uh, it was tough finding training partners. His camp was kind of just, you know, like you said, big fish in a small pond. But he goes to Factory X now. Very structured. Mark Montoya has everyone lined up. Uh, from what I've talked to just all of his teammates, they love him over there. It's been a great fit, great, uh, you know, uh, work getting to work with him and everything. So I think finally him in a great camp, it, it makes a lot of sense. And this to me looks like a fight that the UFC wants him to win. You've got a guy in Chris Guchmacher who hasn't fought since get this when Habib won the lightweight title. Uh, over Ally Quinta at UFC 223. It's been April of 2018 was the last time Grutschmacher fought. And this is a guy who's 34. It's not like a spring chicken, so to speak. So yeah. um, you talked about Hernandez being faster. we got the knockout power. I completely agree here. I was a little hesitant. I was talking about this on my podcast this morning of, you know, betting Hernandez in this fight because you just never know. Like, I mean, you, you hope that it all works out, but there is part of me that just that has that Dober fight fresh in my mind. But Drew Dober's miles ahead of Chris Grutschmacher in this That's fight. That's the key. Yeah. And, um, I like Hernandez here as well. I might lay a little bit there. I might look at the inside the distance prop because I think he knows he's got to finish. He's got to bounce back in a big way after that really embarrassing loss to Drew Dober. So I'm taking Alex Hernandez in this fight. And I'd be absolutely, I think out of most fights on this card, I would be shocked if Hernandez loses this fight. I really would. I completely agree. And honestly, I'm going to be looking at the submission prop because that's the way that his opponent, Grutzmacher has gone down three times. He's got three losses by submission. Now, Hernandez could just outpoint him for 15 minutes. Don't get me wrong. It's totally possible. But he talked about getting that bonus. He talked about getting on track, making a statement, re-entering, doing 2.0 for his career here. So if you were going to look for a prop and play Alexander Hernandez straight personally, I'm going to be looking at the submission prop. Yeah, good call. Really like that. And I want to go ahead and uh, give a shout out here. We've got Aaron Milner stating, I don't understand the round robins. And you know what, people? That is okay. That's why you come here. There's a lot of people who are inexperienced in sports betting. And I love sharing that knowledge. There's a stigma out there, especially on Twitter. People who just don't understand things. You're scared to ask questions because people make you feel stupid for asking it when they've been doing it their entire lives. Ask away. A round robin, my friend, is when you take multiple selections and you pair them into parlays. In this case, let's say, for example, you're taking four favorites and you're linking them up in combinations of two. You're going to have six different parlays because it goes all the way around the table 
parlaying each fighter individually up with each other option available out of your parlays. Obviously, the more legs you add, the more bets you're going to have because it's uh, it's basic math there. It's exponential. But uh, if you do four favorites, you get six parlays. If you do minus you know, 200 to minus 250 to minus 300 favorites, somewhere in that ballpark, your parlays will be roughly even money to like minus 130, minus 140 in that range. So I think it's a fun way to play it. You're not laying too much chalk, and then uh, you've got an opportunity to stack a decent number of units.